know, yeah. do what you got to do. Yeah. But uh, I keep, I keep it, it, has, it has its own little sock. So. <laughs> <laughs> the nest. Got that all worked out. Yep. Yeah. Well, don't at that point, don't you just call it a hammock? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My banana hammock. Exactly. I, I yeah. really hope that's I mean, the first words the stream heard when it kicked on. <laughs> My, my banana, banana hammock. hammock. Like, I mean, socks are for feet. There's, you know, there's a distinction there. <laughs> okay, this thank you, true. Ben. Socks this are for feet. Socks are for feet, not for wieners. <laughs> I mean, the only other thing I could see is maybe making a sock puppet, but... Found him. But nobody wants that. Oh, is that, is that blue hair? What's she, what's she talking about? <laughs> yes, that is blue hair. <laughs> <laughs> you found him. Found it, Marty. It's your kids. Yeah, I don't know. It's what blue. I bought a giant thing of blue. Is so, it blue or is it purple right now? Right now, it's kind of pinkish. Like, oh, no. It was red. So it's like a peachy pink now. Oh. I bought red. That. Wow. Okay. She bought, she bought a bottle that has a blue fox on it. So I'm assuming it's going to turn her hair blue or into a fox. <laughs> Oh, I mean, yeah, she's well, already pretty foxy, but oh, sure. look at Ben going for she points. Might get the ears. Look at yeah, the look at points. him shoot for the goal. Yep, good job. You make me and your fellow men proud. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys going to BlizzCon? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, yes, yeah. Scott. Yes, I am. I knew you were. No, I meant. <laughs> <laughs> I think he meant me and Sarah. I think I meant Sarah. Oh, okay. But, but yes, I did know you. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, we'll be there. In fact, uh, John and Sarah and I are going to be rooming with Ro and Jocelyn. Oh, very nice. Hubba hubba. I mean, that's oh, yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah, there's gonna it's gonna be a, a stacked house. But man, when if I paid for I mean. that uh, when I paid for that hotel bill for five nights or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, that's one of the reasons why I love rooming with Ro. That he gets felt, great deals already. That felt yeah. really good. What uh, what is he getting the killer good deal or something? What's his? Uh, deal? Yeah, he actually booked. Uh, I think the day after BlizzCon last year. Really? So he got a pretty darn good deal. Well, good for him. Is he? Uh, uh, you're gonna have to stay with him. Is it gonna be like what's what's Bo doing? Do we know yet? We don't know what Bo's doing. Uh, he's rooming with TBK, I believe. Oh my gosh, they can have the blue soap. Blue uh, fuzz <laughs> yep. We warned TBK. <laughs> and it was so funny because we were talking to him about it. And he says, uh, he says, I think it'll be fine. He says, Bo can, can roll as much as he wants in the bed, and I don't think it's going to bother me. And I said, Oh, that won't be the issue you got to worry about. <laughs> yeah, it's his weird predilection for having soap with blue fuzz in it whatever the hell that was about and Still... talking in his sleep in english and french yeah that'll be good for him that'll be good for tbk you <laughs> yeah. know that keep, guy could use a little keep him humble a little <laughs> little little horse shit in his life i never hurt anybody <laughs> i didn't realize they were rooming together okay all right and it's a done deal then it's happening uh i think so i don't know i i lashes made him fill out a media application form so oh, shit. yeah right. so he, i think he's now stuck yeah um but anyway we can go ahead and get this started up uh, yeah. uh hi chat room hello how are, hey, how are all of you uh beautiful people <laughs> apparently we didn't tell him scott was gonna be here because everybody's acting surprised that scott's here oh Oh, like, why is, well, I should be surprised. I almost forgot and barely made it. But <laughs> Surprise, Scott, you're on our show. On your show. Wee! <laughs> they shouldn't be surprised. They should only be um, horrified. Because who knows what I'll say tonight. Well, well I mean, tonight's you, the you, night you, of you, secrets. Mm -hmm. I mean, just think about how you started the stream. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, did I start it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sock on the wiener thing got it yep <laughs> forgot all about that for a minute um now is that also sponsored by dropbox no <laughs> <laughs> this sock no, on the wiener out, brought to you by dropbox they are uh, very particularly not happy with my uh my wiener <laughs> 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 oh lord yeah i hear they are pretty picky well, you know, 
What are you going to do? That's what they do. Yeah. That's what they do. Uh, all right, Ben, do you want to just kick us straight off? Oops. Yep, I went I'll to the wrong screen. Off. I'm really bad at going to the screen, so let me switch screens again. There we go. Oh, weird. For some reason, I'm showing offline on mine. Hold on. Give me one second to reload. That's not good. Hey, now we're live. Yeah. Well, I mean, we were <laughs> I like before. that you <laughs> operate under the if I can see them, they can see, or if I can't see them, they can't see me well, of course. mentality with works. the stream. If the stream isn't live for me, we must not be live. Right. <laughs> Even though the chat room was reacting to stuff. You know, they're watching in other ways. That's what happens. That's how you get unintentional nudity on your channel. Um, <laughs> exactly. All right. I appreciate the advice. It's good advice. <laughs> how, do I, how do I get more nudity on my channel, John? <laughs> I would like to get my Twitch account canceled as quickly as possible. What are some key <laughs> steps do this? <laughs> you yeah. think we can take? <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. Um, so starting us off with... Uh, Welcome to Azeroth Roundtable, episode 237. My name is Ben Bumhofer, and uh, with me, as always, is John Jagger. How's it going, John? Hello, Ben! It's uh, Friday night in Azeroth. I took a nap, and so I forgot what <laughs> night it was. I was like, wait, we're Friday night again tonight, right? Yep, we yeah, are. Yeah. It's Friday night in Azeroth, and I'm happy to join you here at the Roundtable. And, uh, hey, we're not alone. We have uh, one We've Mr. Scott Johnson that. with oh, us. Oh, what? Wow. Hello. Hello. Hey, Scott. Hi. How How's are you guys? It's good to be back. I feel like I haven't been on here in a really long time, like maybe a year or more. Um, I think it's uh, close to that, actually. Yeah. And last time I was yeah. here, you all had notes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that true? Yeah. We don't, not, yeah. Nope, That's not right. Anymore. Yeah. The last time you were on is when we decided to completely change our format, actually. Yeah. Which I'm totally cool with, by the way. I think the... Uh, the kind of the winging it and not too stringent kind of method is a good one. And um, so I'm, I'm all in on that. I think that's a great idea. Oh, we have uh, we have Monica, the fact checker in the chat. And she says July last year. I don't Whoa. I don't wow. know if it's creepy that she immediately knew that or uh, cool. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess we officially dub her the fact checker for the show now. Yep. I guess so. Yeah, she's pretty good. She's a both wicked and kitten at the same time. Hey, does she? Uh, does she? So she says July of 2016 is when it happened. Yeah. Wow, that's a year and a half ago. Yeah. Well, welcome, welcome yeah. back. We kept your, <laughs> we kept your seat warm. Thanks, man. I can feel it. It's super nice. It's like a little padded uh, nightmare, really. <laughs> Well, that's good, I guess. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, good. Sure, why not? I know. Well, it's October, so, you know, nightmares are the theme, I guess. Yep, indeed. That works. But, uh, well, see, here's the funny thing is um, I, I would love to have you on every week, but, I mean, you do other shows, so, of course, you can't join us every week. Mm. But, um, you know, there are times where, you know, I know that you do have kind of like an ebb and flow of, you know, when you're playing WoW and everything, and since we are kind of more of a WoW-centric show, mm -hmm. uh, I, I try not to bring you in when you're, you know, not really feeling the game. Sure. So, I mean, I guess one of the big reasons why I'm glad you're here is because you're like totally gung ho back in. And uh, what kind of changed? I am feeling the game right now. Um, I don't know what changed in particular, except that I think what it was is that new patch hit, 7 3 hit. And I kind of didn't even put my toe in into 7 2, just wasn't interested. And um, as much fun as it looked like with you guys rating and everything, I just thought I'm behind. Besides, eh, blah blah. Just I kind of hit my hit my limit there for a while and and needed uh, needed kind of a break. What did it for me was suddenly getting thirty where I was getting like twenty to thirty k in uh, artifact power. I am suddenly now mm -hmm. getting thirty five to forty five million <laughs> points of artifact power on the exact same quest as I would have done previous to the patch and getting so much more for it. So the, I mean, I hate to say it, but the catch up mechanics of the game really drug me back in and made me excited to finish things out. It basically just made it seem like less daunting mm -hmm. and look like I had less work to make up for. Um, I think it's smart of them to do that because first of all, the people that are playing it every day from day one and never stopping their reward is in the, in, in their commitment. Like they're, they're playing hard, they're working hard, they're getting all their stuff, and that's great. For those of us who can't quite keep that pace, there's nothing worse than an MMO, and I think nothing loses players quicker than not feeling like you can take any sort of break at all 
And by doing so, you end up just screwing yourself. Like you're just, oh my gosh, I'm like mm-hmm. nine months behind anybody else. Why even do it? And you end up not playing again. That's what a lot of people do. And that's true of most MMOs. It's even been true of WoW in most of its lifespan or parts of its lifespan. But they, they are pretty good uh, in recent expansions about helping you catch up, be it the boost to 90 back in the Warlords expansion or other methods of sort of hurrying things up. And I think 7.3 was emblematic of that and had lots of opportunities for me to sort of seize on that and go, yeah, I'm behind, but I'm not really that far behind considering how quickly I can do this stuff. And and really it was just a matter of days and ripping through, uh, you know, uh, world quests and doing stuff in Argus and, and things before I was pretty caught up. Like I'm, I'm not caught up gear wise, which is why I'm raiding again, but I am caught up in terms of my, you know, my, at least my hunter, my weapons all maxed out. And in fact, I just got my uh, my second spec up to a reasonable amount of uh, artifact, cool. artifact completion and stuff. So, so that catch up mechanic just really grabbed me and said, "Hey, we don't, you know, you're not left behind. No man left behind. Come on, get in the boat. We're good." <laughs> and I felt I felt it in a really visceral way. But also, I think the the story is hitting a crescendo right now. That's that's super interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and it also feels really important at this stage because this is kind of the last, uh, you know, dregs of what this expansion will be, and 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 will perhaps say something about where we're headed next. Who knows? So so I'm 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 more in than I have been in a very long time, and and that's really my only explanation is I think Blizzard hit the right balance of how do we get yeah. the the faithful who have just taken a few Sundays off back to church, you know. <laughs> That's That's a good way to to say it. it, And I, so the thing that got me that was really interesting to me is I have a tendency to jump in whenever I have, um, you know, whenever big content comes out. And then I kind of fall off again. And, um, but I, I definitely was playing a decent amount. What surprised me most was how into alts I suddenly got. Mm. Because I was Mm -hmm. strictly one class through all of the expansion, I got kind of done playing that class. And then fell off of that. And then when I came back in, it was like, oh, yeah, this is going to be really good to play my rogue again. But then next thing I know, I'm leveling my paladin and I'm leveling my warrior and I'm leveling my death knight and I'm making new characters again. And I don't even know. Maybe it was the catch up mechanics, like you say, but I got pulled in for alts as well as my main. Mm. Yeah, I, I should mention that, too. Um one of the things that drug me back to 7.3, actually probably the original thing, was <laughs> I had seen these videos on MMO Champion and a couple other places of the spell animation changes. And I get really yes. excited about cosmetic changes to the game. I get excited about new tech being shown in the engine or character models or whatever it is. That's exciting to me because it means it's sort of a step forward for, for the game. And it just, I don't know, it's nice to see something new. I actually think a sound overhaul might be in, in order for the game right now. Kind of get tired of the same old sounds we've heard since vanilla in a lot of cases so so i actually think that would be a good idea for them but anyway these, these graphical flourishes are exciting to me so when i saw mages and 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 shaman and these guys throwing all kinds of crazy spell business around i thought well i'd sure like to try some of that that looks good to me so i fired up the old mage who uh was sitting at 100 just chilling from the last uh expansion and hadn't really done anything with him he's a big fat panda and uh, he's way into <laughs> shooting fire and things like that. He's great. So I pulled him out and gave him, uh, you know, dust, blew all the dust off of him and said, let's do this. And sure enough, that's kind of what put me back on the path. And I realized, oh, man, this is so cool. And now I'm into this. And now I want to keep playing. And really, I want to be braiding again. Oh, it's so easier if I just took the guys already leveled up. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's the evolution, I think, of how that all started. Did you end up getting flying? No, so I'm cl- I'm sure I'm close. I did I need to do the like the just straight up busy work of whatever's left. Um, I, I you know go look at the achievement, see what's going on. I even have a, mm-hmm. a mod installed right now that tracks it all, uh, specific to the Pathfinder stuff. And I haven't really put a lot of focus into it since shifting back to uh, kind of raid mindedness. And gotcha. so I need to just finish it. And when I do, that's when panda boy gets gets taken the rest of the way that's when um you know i get these other characters where i where i want to get them because suddenly they can fly suddenly things are faster and 
I don't have oh, to, yeah. you know, worry about what what level of five levels I'm on in High Mountain at any given time. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as you get flying, um, if you're able to do like if you're online, when an invasion happens, take your mage and you'll just like gain so much XP going through those. So here's, level... my, here's my question on those things on the invasions. Yeah. Um, I know they've done some things to discourage people just AFKing and, you know, soaking it up um, while they're s sitting there or whatever. Are these different than the invasions that are on Argus? Because the invasions on Argus are hard. Like oh, yeah, totally fr different. Freaking um, hard. Okay, so they're not even... Because I didn't touch any of that invasion stuff, 7.2, any of the new island, any of that stuff at the time. Okay. So I have no, I have no sort of taste for them, so I probably should just spend some more time waiting for those to pop or finding out when they pop. I'm sure there's some kind of timer or some kind of add-on that'll tell me. Most likely. Yeah. But, I mean, essentially what it is is uh, just one of the zones on the Broken Shore is invaded, mm -hmm. and then a whole bunch of uh, icons will pop up like world quests. So then you just go and do, like, the world quest equivalent of the invasion for it, and then you just get a ton of XP for as soon as you, like, you know, finish the requirements or for whatever it is. Do you Whether ever... it's, you know, kill this giant mob or, um, you know, save ten prisoners, three eagles, and kill one thing. Yeah. What do you, when you do that, do you feel, or is it, is it, can you just go into those things and there's tons of people doing them and you don't have to oh, yeah. stress? Okay. I should just do it then. That'd be a way to do it. I just, I got so, I was so down on my hunter for a while. I was kind of bored with him, to be honest. It was part of my problem. So I thought, oh, I'll reinvigorate, reinvigorate myself with the mage. And now I'm kind of back to the hunter feeling and reinvigorated with the hunter somehow. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't really understand what I did different, but um, it's it's working for me right now. So I, I don't know. The goal is though to get to get flying. I don't like the homework they give you to do that. Like I just think it's kind of a pain. The yeah. way I wish that thing worked was this. I wish it was the way it worked in what was it? Wrath, where I didn't get that <clears throat> cold weather flying until I got to the end of the content and then paid a thousand gold. Yeah. And then suddenly I had it. I don't know why that's still not a thing. I understand they don't want to do like Cataclysm where I fly everywhere constantly uh, from from the minute I start leveling until I cap out. I understand that. I totally I get that. I understand why it's valuable and all that. And I am 100% cool with that. I just think once you get somebody to 110 in this expansion, I don't know why you've got to go do that other stuff. Maybe it's just another piece of, exp of, uh, of um, progression that they stuck in there to say, all right, so you had your character now, you got your weapon, now you got your world quests, and you've got new stuff on top of that weapon after certain patches, and now the Argus stuff and the Crucible and all of that. So here's all these progression systems in the game. It's like almost like five different RPGs jammed into one big MMORPG. Yeah. And maybe the right, the flying thing is just one more of those. It's like, yeah. well, yeah, we'll give them one more thing. They kind of have to earn it. It's a bit like, you know, progressing through anything else. So another piece of progression. Like, I have a feeling they've got a whiteboard in their office where Ian Hazakosa stands up and just writes the word progression over and over. And, <laughs> and it's a good way to, <laughs> I mean, it's a good way to, and this is kind of a negative way to say it, but it's true. It's a good way to kind of force content on people. Like, I, we re we're really proud of our mythic dungeons. So mm -hmm. let's put some of that gating behind a mythic dungeon, which I don't, I don't think they did. But um, they can do that sort of stuff with this. I think you're right. It's a progression thing. But I'll tell you, as I was sitting here thinking about what got me on my alts, flying was one of the big things. Knowing that I could just go from point A to point B very yeah. quickly made alts so much more appealing. And alts, I think, add more to the end game for me personally as a player than even extending out the content. Because if all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I want to get in, I want to see this Demon Hunter story that's going to be a ton of content for me and keep me in the game a lot longer than even we put a new dungeon in the game. Because I'll go, yeah. great, I'll run the dungeon once and probably be done. Uh, but whereas the, the Demon Hunter, you know, I've got to go through all the levels and then I want to see the class story and I want to see everything that's attached to it. And that's going to keep me engaged for a lot longer. So I personally remain on the side of, like, yeah, get to max level, give us flying, Give it to the whole account at that point and let your alts benefit from it. And, uh, you know, I, I think they have found a happy medium to, you know, versus, hey, we're not going to give it to you at all. But, uh, well, it's definitely a lot better than it was in Warlords. I mean, I'll take this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sure. my gosh. 
that was a nightmare. I didn't finish it because it just pissed me off. And I don't like anything that's gated too much around you must run these dungeons. And it's such mm -hmm. a dumb thing to complain about because we're in the world's largest freaking Warcraft guild still. It's not like I don't have people I couldn't <laughs> call on today and say, guys, let's go run all these dungeons, and they would do it. It's just, I, I don't know, it's a weird principle thing for me. I just feel like I'm being forced to do something that shouldn't be part of it. But that being said, I actually think, I mean, on the whole, this expansion's had some of the best progression mechanics of anything they've ever done. Well, I'll just say it. It's better than anything they've done up to this well, point. Well, Scott, I will say that you are very lucky that you're doing flying now as opposed to during 7.2 because you probably would have definitely fallen off of caring about getting hit. Mm -hmm. uh, during 7.2 with the Broken Shore stuff, it's you had like a quest a week that you had to do. And, it, you know, you finish your quest, boom. You just wait a week till the next one opens up. And, I mean, it was it's really boring and a horrible slog going through that. It's like, okay, well you have a quest to kill a hundred demons here. And then the next week would be do 10 world quests. And then the next week would be, you know, just all that, you know, busy work and everything that's been, you know, put into the expansion. Yeah. So, I mean, you still have to do it, but at least when you finish one thing, you can jump right into the next thing and just like get most of it done right away. Yeah. So I, 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 yeah, I feel like I dodged a little bit of a bullet in terms of that. But again, you know, I don't want to be one of those guys where everybody earned it the hard way, except <laughs> old Scott here. Just <laughs> tell, you know, tell it happened. But I, but I really appreciate them supporting my particular play style and my current timeline. Like when new expansions come out, they get all my game time. Like it's all I want to do for weeks oh, yeah. and weeks. And, weeks. and I kind of, if anything, it's part of the problem. I end up burning out so fast because I want to just eat this thing, you know, all at once. And then I'm kind of at that point where it's like, okay, well, everything I want to do now takes forever. Or everything I do now is more like busy work and it's this awkward stage, which I still say they do better than anybody in the business at. Yeah, It still kind of sucks for me as someone who likes something fresh to do all the time. Well, mm -hmm. So, so I, I, I credit where credit is due. They've somehow figured out a way to make this expansion way interesting to me in the third act uh, where I usually am way falling off. Like I'm usually in like, total circle orbit mode waiting for a new expansion right now and not caring at all and i'm way back into caring i care man that actually kind of brings me to another question i wanted to ask you about so today because i can see the core heroes feed uh i got kind of I the ability to peek into a conversation between uh, a listener of patrick's and um and him talking about his new WoW show that he's going to be doing, in addition mm -hmm. to the instance. Yep. And uh, they were saying, like, hey, don't you think that's going to be redundant content? And he said no, and he explained his reasons why no. Um, but it got me kind of on this path of thinking, you know, a lot of WoW shows, uh, including the instance, went, we're going to cover multiple games. We're going to mm -hmm. cover all Blizzard games and kind of make it general. We even did that for a little while here as well um, before we kind of bounced on that. But we, um, I was thinking about that today, like why that became so prevalent. Mm -hmm. And what it made me question, and I want to ask you this as somebody who's done a WoW show for a while now and had to find content for it and all of that, do you think the WoW experience has become too streamlined in the sense that we all have the same stories? Because I feel like when you get into an open world game, um, there's a lot of like, this is my experience, and it's a very mm -hmm. unique and different experience, and this is what I went through, and hey, here's a crazy thing that happened to me today, and it isn't necessarily what happened to someone else. But now all of a sudden we're into this weird place where we all kind of have gone through the same things. Oh, did you do the flying quests? Oh, mm -hmm. did you do the raid? Did you go through the dungeons? Did you complete this quest chain? And they're all very similar experiences. Do you think that's a problem? Do you think that's a strength? And has it made your life harder as a creator to have to do an engaging show about WoW every week when everyone's kind of on the same boat? Well, it's... Man, this is a good question, and no one's ever really asked me this before, so I haven't really had to confront it very much, but we've gone through... I mean, our show's old anyway. We've been doing it since 2006, and 
you know, we're, what is, what, how many years is that now? What are we, 11 years, almost 12 years uh, yeah. of doing this show? And um, yeah, in January it'll be 12, which is nuts. And so as great as that is and as proud as I am of it and how it's gone and everything, there was this point that I think is a culmination of things. I think one, I think part of it was Warlords really left us in a place of feeling like we needed to branch out. Like Warlords just gave us so much less to talk about. Um, and I don't know if it's just because that was the point the game was at. Like that was obviously a growing pain for them. It was probably a growing pain for everybody making content about the game. I can't speak for everybody else, but I definitely felt that. No, it was. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I felt like, well, what's going on then? What's going on is Blizzard is is still killing it and they've got a bunch of other stuff happening. So maybe we should mention those other things because we're all playing those things and whether it be Hearthstone or Overwatch or Heroes of the Storm, it just felt like maybe we should. And it's funny, the show Core that I do with John and Bo uh, for Heroes of the Storm came out of the fact that I was playing enough heroes to feel like it needed its own spotlight. And there was more content there than I was actually getting for WoW, but I didn't want to make the WoW show a hero show. Mm -hmm. That would be weird. So... So that's why we did that. And you'll notice people listen to the instance, even during the time when we were doing a lot of other coverage of Blizzard stuff, it was pretty rare we'd mention the, the, the hero stuff. If we did, it was real small. And then I would say, make sure you listen to the core this week because we talk about it in length. And I think I've come back around. I've gone in this circle of like, all right, we have to start incorporating more and more Blizzard stuff. And I've, you know, the show's always been willing to talk about it. Like since day one, StarCraft II gets announced in 2010. We freaking talked about it, or not announced, but released. We, of course, we talked about it. We we played it and discussed it, and kind of gave many reviews of it back in the day, me and Randy, and it was that was the way it was. And we always would do that. Same thing when Diablo came out. You know, we didn't just shut up and pretend Blizzard doesn't do anything but WoW. But uh, but in the last year, two years maybe, again, Warlords kind of after Mathy, uh, we started spending more time. So it'd be like a chunk of stuff at the top of the show on WoW, and then we go, all right, well. Now let's talk about this weird thing that happened in Hearthstone or whatever. And that seemed like the right idea because, again, we wanted to make sure we had the content for the to, for the show to, con to mm -hmm. continue to thrive. We wanted to be where the listeners wanted us to be. But more importantly, we wanted to be where we were having our passion at the time. Like, if we're enjoying what we're enjoying, we should be talking about that, not forcing something else. And, um, you know, we always just sort of knew when the new expansion hits, like when Legion came out, it's all we talked about for months. Then it yeah, ebbed off. Same thing will probably happen to this next expansion. There'll be some ebbing of some sort. But what's changed recently is core happened. It's not that recent, but it's part of this. Uh, and and it showed. And before that, the Diablo show, which is you know kind of on a hiatus until Diablo does something new. But the idea was still there to say, okay, it gets its own little corner of discussion. And today. <laughs> yep it's good today timing was, <laughs> yeah this actual day today it wasn't actually planned this way but i had a little extra time this morning so i finished it out but um i launched a small who knows where it's going to go at this point it's going to be real basic but a, a small weekly overwatch thing oh cool that, yeah called exploding tire which people can find at frogpants.com slash exploding tire don't slash an actual exploding tire though that's <laughs> Not you, you'll, you'll get a premature explosion. Yeah, you may get that. Um, but I'm but I did that as, a, again, a way to feed my my game lust for Overwatch as a standalone thing. What that means is the instance has slowly this is just a, a symptom of it, but the instance is slowly getting back. Not slowly, but it is evolving back to being primarily a wow show again without me really knowing that I was doing that. In other words, these are all just experiments. We're all hacking at the weeds with machetes in the middle of the jungle. We don't really know where all this stuff is going. I mean, so much of what we, we do, and when I say we, I mean all of us making content around Blizzard products, we don't know what Blizzard's going to do. Like, what if they just went nuts one day and just <laughs> lost it? And they didn't have their cool community anymore. And they didn't have their, their awesome development cycles and stuff to talk about. And they weren't, you know, the Disney or the Apple or the what or the Google of of the industry anymore. If that started to happen, what would we do? Well, I don't know. We'd have to, you know, have, to have a hard coming to Jesus moment <laughs> about everybody's shows. And I feel like 
we're nowhere near that, but but it's got me to thinking about well, you know, where where do I want to be if that happens, and if it never happens, where do I want to be? I kind of want to just you know make sure I'm I'm taking as realistic look at this stuff as possible. And what I've come the conclusion I've come to is there is room in my life for everything Blizzard makes. There just is. I love it all. The only one I don't really like is Hearthstone because I just don't like it. Yes, <laughs> it's not my thing. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't squeeze my cheese. Okay. <laughs> For whatever reason, like I know there's plenty of people who love it. I love turn-based strategy games. I even like uh, deck builders, but I don't like CCGs. I never have. And, and and try as I might, and as much as the Blizzard sauce is smeared all over it, I can't eat it. I just can't do it. I've tried. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I Unfortunately, every single time I try to log in to get, you know, like free packs or whatever, just because, you know, yay, Blizzard, they give us free stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. Um I need to actually like play and win three games against the computer before I can actually get the free stuff. So I'm like, oh, I've never seen that again. No, and if it feels like work, <laughs> why do you want to do it? It's, it shouldn't feel exactly. like And there are so many players who love it, and I'm so glad it exists for them because that's great. It, this absolutely scratches very specific itch mm -hmm. for people. For me, uh, it just doesn't do it. Part of it, I think part of it is like, actually goes to what John was saying earlier about characters and wow and the and the experience everyone having being kind of a homogenized version of each other's story mm -hmm. um to me hearthstone is 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 totally that and and then some because in hearthstone if you want to get in and just screw around for your first couple games you've never played before you're gonna have some fun you're gonna see some cool poppy graphics you're gonna have a laugh at some dumb voice line like it's gonna be a good time but if you really want to play it and you want to play ladder every month or you want to play even just serious free play or uh, 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 quick play every month or whatever they call it in there. What is it called? Whatever it is. I think, do they just call it ranked? Wild? No, not ranked because ranked is... Oh, is the arena? No, not that either. Well, is whatever it is. The play, whatever card it was. Three it like people who like don't that? play Hearthstone. Try to whatever. remember what things in Hearthstone are called. <laughs> whatever they call it or whatever they want to even call it or whatever the, of the four modes people are playing, you get into this position where it's like, all right, well, I could do what I think is going to be fun and I can be creative, or I can do what I'm going to end up doing, which is min-maxing my way, way to a website and finding out what decks I need to play. Yeah. And then I'm going to play those decks because that's what everyone says are the right decks. I hate that in video games. Now, I like to maximize my, my potential, but I will, I will sacrifice min-maxing for fun factor for fantasy for that kind of stuff. For example, I'm I'm dabbling with marksman with my hunter right now, but I really enjoy playing my beastmaster. And and the re answer the reason is is I think a hunter is a dude with pets who throws monkeys at problems. Like <laughs> I want to I want to I want to live that fantasy and I and I enjoy it even so if it means an extra, you know, a, a, a percentage cut to my overall DPS as much as that may suck for a team I'm on or something, that's more fun to me. So Hearthstone is like the is like the epitome of this idea where I have to do these killer shaman decks like everyone else is doing, or else I'm I can't compete. So what's the point? And I well, hate that. I can't stand. You know, it's funny because John uh well until very recently had an issue where uh some of the legendaries that he had on his rogue meant that he couldn't play the way that he wanted to because in order to min-max, he needed to have a speed boost, but he couldn't actually choose the best talent in the entire... Well, the used-to-be best talents in the entire game, which was John. Grappling hook. Mm, I've heard this tale, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even a rogue player, but I've heard plenty of people, John included, sort of uh, bemoan its, uh, its loss in the game. It's a real bummer. Yeah. But, but, but here's the thing. In John's case... It reminds me of my of my chief complaint about Diablo, one of my favorite game series of all time. I love Diablo 3. I think that game is great. I'm looking forward to the next season, blah, blah, blah. Like, all those things are still true. But what I don't like is that, oh, guess what? This season, your, uh, your uh, wizard gets this set, and this set is awesome for this build. Right. A build I don't want to play. I don't want to play some arcane you know, poop mage. I'm not interested. <laughs> I want to play icy things. I want to play fiery stuff. I want to do, I want to do what I want to do. And I can still do that, but there's this looming thing that says, but the wizards who know what's better are doing this. And even though I'm like, well, I don't really want to do that. There's this weird gaming culture pressure stuff. 
And I hate that in games. Well, and it got even worse for me. I got my I got a new legendary in WoW, and I was very yeah. excited. And yeah. I looked at it, and it grants me a passive speed boost. So it enhances the legendary that I didn't <laughs> want to use that upped my damage based on speed boost. And now that's just the build. That's just my reality. Is that that is now the kind of rogue I'm gonna play in Man. WoW. I don't have a choice. The game has rolled the dice too many times mm -hmm. and has come up, this is how you're going to play the game now. And I looked at my <laughs> sockets for my weapon with, with the new Netherlight Crucible. And I, I had a big plan. I was like, oh, man, I want to take this one that does extra damage and extra healing. I like that sustain. That sounds good. But now, now that I'm looking at it with new eyes, the alternative <laughs> choice is a passive speed boost. And mm -hmm. I was like, well, damn it. Now I have to pick that one. Yeah. So it, that's my future. That's the future I live in that Blizzard has decided for me. And it's fine. But, yeah. like, I now have to be the fastest rogue on the planet. The Blizzard yeah. has decided I'm the Flash. And that bums me out because I think you should... The, 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 the end goal, and maybe it's still their goal, it's just hard to get there, but the end goal should always be, let me get to where I want to be, how I want to be. And there are a lot of games that claim to do that. I think ESO does a pretty good job of that, um, letting you kind of build what you want to build. But in the end of the day, there's still builds for that that are supposed to be the best for whatever combination of race and class you're going to be. So it's no different there. It's no different in this game. Here's the difference for me in WoW. Whereas I feel that pressure in Hearthstone because I'm not going to have fun or win games unless I do. Okay, that's the difference. If I want to play Hearthstone and I want to have fun, I need to win. If I'm going to win, I have to use decks that everyone says are going to be winning decks. There's just no way around it. And if I don't have those cards, i got to craft them, take whatever time it takes, or spend money to find the cards I need. Blah, 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 right? There's the Hearthstone nightmare. In WoW, I used to feel some of the same stuff. I felt that same, like, well, you know, you should be marksman right now because they're, blah, 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 blah. they're the best <laughs> in the game right And I'd be like, yeah, but I like, you know, my tiger and my stuff and my thing, and I don't want to do lone wolf and, like, all these problems I yeah. have. Those builds, plus I think they're kind of boring rotations. And... Now I just don't care. Like I've come to <laughs> I've come to a place where I don't give a shit anymore if anyone says to me what's best and what isn't. I don't care. And truth is, I haven't ever really cared. Like here we are 12 years into this show of mine and it has always uh you know, we we we've been very uh you know, lucky and, and fortunate with that show to have it be popular and remain popular and still be an influence and be a thing that it is. And I'm really proud of that and that's great. But if I look back and think about it, the fun I was having was never me going, okay, how can I make sure that this character has every possible... Brr, brr, brr. I mean, I want to make cool stuff, but I want it to be my cool stuff. I don't want it to be Icy Vein's cool stuff. I don't want it to be <laughs> Wowhead's cool stuff. I want it to be my cool stuff. So in that effort, lately especially in the 7.3 stuff where I've come back, I have really let go of that notion that I need to be a thing, that, I'm, that I need to be a <laughs> template that somehow if you're not that, then you're doing it wrong. Like, freaking F that. Like, and I don't even think it's the same. I don't even think that's what John's saying. John, what you're saying, and I've known you long enough to, I think, know this about you. You're in it to win it, and you're in it to maximize it, because that's how you want to play the game, and you'll do that. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. What I'm talking about is this feeling of, like, like, I've never heard you go, oh, well, this is what I'm doing with my rogue. If you're not, then you're a poo-poo cheese, right? <laughs> <laughs> I like, mean, I, I did hate. give other rogues who didn't pick Grappling Hook a little sideways <laughs> glance, and I was like, look, somebody offered you filet mignon, and you were like, no, sorry, we're going to Mickey D's tonight. Like, right. <laughs> I, there was a question there, but I didn't begrudge them their poor life decisions. It's like Twin Blades variant. I know where you're at with some of these things. I get it. <laughs> I get it. Well, but, it but, but my point is, like, at the end of the day, uh, wow, for it to rebirth itself for me each time I play it or for me to, to come back around on it for as long as it's been out. I've been playing it since Friends and Family beta back in 2003. That's how long I've had my hands in this game. Um. I I needed that to happen. Like, I needed that let go moment, and it totally happened for me. And now I just don't give a crap. I'm <laughs> like, I'm just going to play what I think is fun. If I get something rad going, I'm like, sweet, I like how this feels. I'm going to do this. 
Yeah, it's and, funny that you uh, mentioned yeah. that because back in Warlords of Draenor, uh, when we were first raiding, what is it, High Mountain? I think it was like one of the first ones you go to. Yeah. Um, I was having an issue on my mage, you know, trying to keep up, trying to do DPS. And that was where I, a lot of the fights yeah, were. I, was it Black Rock Mountain? Where was it? Where did we go? I can't um, remember. Yeah, High Mountain high, is where the Mountain, High Mountain. live. Uh, high Mall, High Mall. That's high it. mall that's with it. all the ogres, right? Yeah, we're all the, we're the they got a there's a high mall, there's a there's an orange Julius in there, they got a yep, pizza exactly. Thing. Yeah, it's great. Food court yeah. and all that. Food court opens the Sparrows, at 20 at the high mall. <laughs> yeah, the Sparrows. Ooh, pizza. Ooh, really? I love it there. Oh my gosh. Oh. I love Sparrows pizza. I could eat that right now. But anyway, go ahead. But um, so anyways, I was trying to keep up, you know, DPS wise on my mage, but a lot of the fights were, oh, you have to move constantly, which as you know, when you're on a mage, a little hard to do. Yeah. So you know, I just it got to the point where um, we needed healers, and so I went ahead and swapped to my my panda, uh, to my monk, and I've been healing ever since. Mm -hmm. And it's weird because you know I was always like trying to be top DPS just because it helped the team. It, it was never like a I have to be better than everyone else. It's I want to see my numbers go up. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as I switched to being a healer. I stopped caring about numbers entirely. It's like, okay, are people still alive? Yes, we're good. But yeah, that's a pretty it, good. I like that metric a little better than, mm -hmm. than just what's this meter say. And I know that you can look at healing meters too, but I in, I uninstalled, uh, what's the name of the mod that everyone always, Recount. I got rid of it. Yeah. yeah. Because it just, I felt pressure that wasn't fun. Yeah. Instead, I just kill stuff. The numbers I care about now are like, oh, those shoulders are 300 more agility than the last pair mm -hmm. I had. That's enough for me. Like, that's good. Like, that's what I want. I almost want that in every video game I play of any kind. I just want this nice, I've progressed. I've made some progress. It's like life. I don't have to be the best at everything. I just want to be, you know, I want to be okay. Yeah. I want to be able to, I want to, be able to say, now that uh, was a, that, I was a good poo that today. I'm proud of that poo I took today. <laughs> was it a Sparrow's poo? <laughs> no, because there's no such thing as a good poo after Sparrow's. No. <laughs> you know, like, that's a bad example. It's like, um, uh, Really? Know. You thought the poo example ended up not going the way you wanted it to? I just didn't have a out. I finished. Breath. Weighed that metric in my mind. Wasn't happy with how the poo analogy came out. But it's like, you know, if you make, uh, like, okay, I got an example. I mean, half of what I do is art and illustration. And when I when I finish something I, I am proud of, I'm always happy that two months later I did something similar that I think is better. Like, it's that kind of progression that, that gives me satisfaction. It's no longer... Sweet, I'm the th one of the top three DPS in this fight. I mean, that's there's something to that. I'm not saying there isn't, and that's and that can be great yeah. competition. Maybe I'm just at a place now where it's just like, this is a video game, dude. I'm here to have some fun. <laughs> I'm here to laugh. I paid my 15 bucks, just like the rest of you clowns. <laughs> Let's just play, and that's it. And that, and and it took me a long time to kind of to kind of get there. Weirdly. No, but I'm I'm right there with you. I don't have recount anymore. And after I raided again for the first time, there was a part of me that was like. Did I do okay? I wish I had a way to know if I did okay. <laughs> and I was worried about it. But what ultimately I just came away with was, oh, no, there were boss fights that I was seeing for the first time, and I was mm -hmm. the last person alive. So yeah. I may mm -hmm. not have had the highest DPS. I may not have fallen under the ep the upper echelon, probably because I don't pre-pot, because F that mess. <laughs> um, but I... At least I was able to keep the mechanics down, do damage, and stay in the fight for the entire fight. And I didn't. Or you had a friend who wipe. healed you to make sure that you could see the whole fight, so that you know how to do it. <laughs> I'm not I, saying I did that, but no, 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 of course not. Maybe. But I mean, I am, I'm under maybe. no illusions. I'm no under no illusions that that in a lot of ways, especially me coming back late and everybody being overgeared compared to me and everything else, I'm being carried a little bit. I get it. I'm, I totally get it. Uh, and it's not like I'm, you know, blind to that. I totally get it. Like if there were, if everybody was me in those fights, we wouldn't even be thinking about heroic at this point, and we'd still be <laughs> trying to decide whether we can do kill Jaden or not. But at the same time, because we've got this community and everything, it makes it a little easier. So I mean, here's the truth: if I didn't have a big rating ecosystem to to jump into, I probably wouldn't raid. I'd probably do LFR and get that stuff that way the best I can and any other sort of PVE way of doing things. And, and that would be okay with me in this game. Yeah. Um, well, the, the funny thing is, is that our raid team is like, it, it's such a mixture of, you know, people who really do, you know, they push 
forward. They're they're you know not exactly trying to be the the top of the DPS meters, but they're trying to push the whole team forward. Whereas we have other people who you know like I can't log in every single day to do everything. I mean, obviously you can't, John. I know you can't, and we work with what we have and like support each other in a sense mm -hmm. you know there's no way that we're a heroic team that's not our goal our goal is the friends and family and you know so far this entire expansion we've been able to you know beat the end boss of the raid before it's irrelevant mm -hmm. and i'd say that tuning wise legion's been doing pretty good for us i mean there was a time where Nighthold was like so overwhelming that we kind of crapped ourselves on some of those boss fights but it's it's something that's actually worked really well this expansion like the last time that we had tuning this good was probably i'd say uh, siege of orgrimmar i mean all of draenor we had a horrible horrible issues with raiding yeah but we, we've done well with the mix of people that we have I, I i agree and i think that again it's huge credit to i mean there's i can't say enough about i think what's turned out to be ian's leadership um mm -hmm. I know that Tom Chilton was there for uh, a lot of the development of Legion, so I don't want to not give him credit or anything. But clearly, they've given they've given Ian uh, the bag, <laughs> and he has really run with it. And you can just get a sense of his his handprint on all this. And certainly, this late uh, late expansion content that we've been getting is clearly stuff under his leadership. The team is really killing it right now. I've said this on the other show, and I really I really like to hammer this home. Blizzard has has figured out a way to take their aging game with all the problems that come with it being an aging game and and not let them uh, age with it. In other words, they've decided to just buckle down and work twice as fast, like just to make it better than it could have been to make Legion really, really make up for uh, Legion or for uh, uh, Warlords. And it's possible that Warlords, <laughs> I mean, it's, Warlords may have been a disappointment. I don't think there's a conspiracy that they made it a disappointment so that no matter what, Legion would look better. I don't think that was <laughs> yeah. it. But there, it's not like it's Cataclysm or something. No, not no. But <laughs> but they they have done things such smart things this time around that feel so like the the just you know artifact weapons. Period turned out to be just such a great thing. Like in my, I, we, Patrick and I talked about this, but in my mind, it is the best expansion they've ever made for many, many reasons, but really it's the hole that shines. And it's, um, it's incredible. Like it's incredible that this far into it, and especially after what was the dip of Warlords, they figured out a way to make this happen. And I think it's awesome. I hope that this, you know, is a, is a, a sign of things to come. And I don't see why it wouldn't be. You've got really smart, talented people in there right now that are making, making, you know, gold out of a, old bale of hay that's 12 years <laughs> well and speaking of new hires christy golden now full-time blizzard mm -hmm. employee uh yeah. gives me a lot of hope for where that story might be going um yeah that's I, interesting yeah. right because i thought she i mean i knew about the temporary position and of course before that her and metzen and others would work very closely together but i remember asking metzen either on air or off for our interview i don't remember if it made it to air or not but i asked him after he retired if he was worried about story in the hands of people where he's not there to direct it. And he, I don't remember his exact words, but basically it was just that he had, he felt huge amounts of confidence in the people that he had, that he had there working with him that would then carry that stuff on. And even prior to her full hiring, I feel like they've killed it with story yeah. lately. Mm -hmm. Like it's really good. And I haven't asked him this, but I bet he sees that stuff and goes, Oh man, I'm so glad I left it in the right hands. Cause it's it's great. I mean, and he was the first to admit that toward the end there, plus with all the work he was doing with other games in the in the company, it's not like he was full time telling everybody what Thrall should be doing. Yeah. So so it was you know a lot of that work had already been done, and now these guys are just carrying it on, and I think they're doing an incredible job. And you match those guys up with the with the in game cinematics team and Taron Gregory's team mm -hmm. and everybody else, they're just oh, man. Those murdering. cinematics this this expansion have been mind blowingly good. Yeah, over the top, amazing, and they just get better. I I love it. Like the, it'll be a meme forever. But you know, Liam O'Brien yelling "I am my scars" is one of the coolest moments in the history of Warcraft, mm -hmm. and it really just was stunning. And it's just in-game cinematics, and not really that big a deal, but it it came off so well. Like I, I 
I like to think sometimes that Warlords was just them putting out what they what they had to, so they could all be all hands on deck on what was next. That's how that feels. To I me. think that's true. I I don't that think that's right. a conspiracy theory to say. I get the impression that they started Warlords, they saw issues coming, and I think they had a come to Jesus moment where they said, "Look, guys, we might have to take a hit on one so that we can do it right for the next." Yeah. Like, and, and we're not going to I don't think they were like, oh, let's sink this expansion. But I think it was definitely a case of we need kind of a holding pattern for this one so that we can do something really special and get back on track. Yeah, Plus that, with that all was of, like a rebuilding yeah. year for a for an NBA team or something. That's how it felt to me. Exactly. And yeah. being able to actually like identify and share with the player base that, hey, we realized this was a mistake. This is how we're improving it. And being, you know, very open about that stuff really gave me, you know, a lot of hope for Legion before it came out. And they've just had the follow through to really, you know, push it into our hands and say, look, it, see, we learned from our mistakes. We're making this better. And even from patch to patch, we're already seeing changes of, of the way that content is being, you know, handed out and distributed and everything. And it, it's, I mean, 7.3 has been a fantastic patch, especially with the way that they've done the story. Um, for years, John and I have said that 5.1 was the best. That was back in Pandaria with the dominance offensive stuff where you, you know, kind of rep up and get more story and everything. Mm -hmm. But 7.3 has, I mean, they give you a lot of story up front. They give you, you know, content to play and everything. And even though, like, I'm kind of done with story with that, I'm still really happy and engaged with what's going on with everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. I, 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 uh, I mean, I'll see you mentioned Pandaria. Pandaria is, um, I think most players feel this way now. I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say. I can't speak for everybody, but I, I really think highly of that expansion. Yeah, same. I think it's one of the best things they've done. I loved it. I loved the, what it brought to the game. I loved how it felt and looked and the fact that they took, what could have been the silliest thing ever and turned it into this really almost reverent experience of, mm -hmm. of, of a new people and, and, a, and a new way of thinking. And like that stuff was, was really, really great. Um, the difference between that and the reason I hope the next expansion is a bit like Pandaria is I, I do know after Legion, I'm going to be a little demoned out, you know, <laughs> just a touch, <laughs> just a little sick of seeing fell green stuff everywhere. I'm going to be mm -hmm. a little tired of, of craggy, dark you know matte gray rocks and and fighting these demon lords that come through these green portals i think i think we're i think it's good that we're nearing some closure there yeah um and they've done it in the best coolest possible way and all of that so i my worries at the beginning of legion this was going to be a rehash of burning crusade were completely unfounded and dumb yeah because it's nothing like burning crusade really at all except illidan's involved that's it and he, boy is he involved Oh my um, gosh. <laughs> he's all over this damn thing. And uh, I was telling Liam the other day, I'm like, dude, you're in my ear every day. <laughs> <laughs> and you're always barking off something about, we must attack the river. And he's, I, and he's like, uh, he goes, you wouldn't believe how many hours I spent in there. And he directed all the VO for this thing and like went crazy with it. And it's so well done. I'm like, I don't know what they're going to do with you next, but man, I hope, you know, I hope it's co as cool as this. But I'm sick of. Greenfell, I'm sick of Demon mm -hmm. Lords. I'm ready for something fresh and new, the way Pandaria was fresh and new, but with all these new systems we have going forward, with the, exactly. the characters the way they are, the way these these specs have really panned out over this last expansion. Like, I really want to go somewhere special, somewhere new, somewhere we haven't thought of, and we're going to find out what that is in, like, a month. I know. That's crazy. Yeah. Although, I am I mean, I, there's a part of me, I don't want to get too conspiratorial right at the end of the show, but there's a, are, are any of you slightly worried we're not going to hear about a next expansion? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Um, I, can't I can't imagine it's not going to happen, but I suppose there's a percentage chance it won't, but I cannot imagine it, especially considering the following. We don't have any, we know that we're not getting any Diablo news because they've said so. Um, ahead of time and we know that I mean we kind of know what's happening with Overwatch with Heroes of the Storm with Starcraft like none of that stuff's new we know where there are mystery projects happening and we think we know what it is now or at least one of them because of that job listing that got promptly yanked 
Yeah. Ooh, I don't know about this. The, the RTS MMO mobile game that was oh, there okay. on the careers page, and which would explain why all the RTS people are on a secret project and why you know Corey Stockton and all these guys mm-hmm. ended up over there. Um, oh my gosh, I was talking to Corey today. He was at that concert in Vegas, by the uh, way. I heard about that. That's what that. I heard. That's. I think Ian insane. was there too. Those guys were running out of that place with all those people. Oh my gosh. Anyway, point is. Sorry, just reminded me of that. But all those guys are off doing that stuff, Holinka and everybody else. So they maybe have some things to announce, but they also haven't been doing that very long. So in Blizzard fashion, I wouldn't think they'd be ready to announce anything. Yeah. So what else do you have? You have Warcraft finishing an expansion ready for the next one. If they don't do it, I'd be utterly shocked because there's no way they wait <laughs> another year. So I'd be blown away if they didn't announce it. I, well, I agree, and the chat's like immediately like, let me tell you all the reasons why you're wrong, John, and they're going to talk about it. <laughs> I agree, but every now and then you got to flirt with unpopular ideas, and I just thought, what if they don't? <laughs> what no, if we go there and they're like, let me tell you about 7.4. Uh, we're going to go... That's a good hypothetical. <laughs> it's a fun hypothetical to play with. I, I'm with John on this, but I don't, I don't think there's any chance we don't get a WoW expansion announcement, and you know, setting, possible teaser video stuff, possible, all the things they always do. We're going to get all that. I guarantee, well, didn't- I say I guarantee it, I can't guarantee anything, but I, <laughs> but I am, if I was a betting person and I had a thousand dollars cash, I'd put it all on that we're getting a new expansion come BlizzCon. I would think Which so. is black. Yeah, it's all on black. Yeah. Always been on black. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, it, okay, so correct me if I'm wrong, but last BlizzCon, they actually didn't really have an actual expansion announcement or anything they had more info for legion but i mean there wasn't an, an expansion announcement for anything else i mean we had you know new hero for overwatch new stuff for for heroes um well i guess hearthstone had uh hearthstone had an expansion yeah, yeah. But, was... i mean they, they do that every time because you know they, they come out every couple months yeah they're 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 <clears throat> their turnaround is a lot quicker um the uh, the big thing last year was we thought we were going to get a diablo thing and all we got uh, was the necromancer stuff, which was fine, but that yeah. you know wasn't like full Diablo Four or something like that, or an expansion. You know, fingers crossed for this year, right, guys? Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> except they already said no. Yeah, they oh darn. Diablo. They gave us the early word on that, which really is a bummer. But it's also kind of nice because yeah. I don't want to have to think about it and wonder and wish and then be disappointed. Well, especially but, when their opening video opens on a pair of dice with the number four showing on it and the entire crowd goes, oh, and then it's yeah. like, here's the history of Blizzard. Yeah, that was, weird. <laughs> that was really weird that they did that. But I think that you'll get your usual new character stuff for possibly Overwatch Heroes, expansion for Hearthstone. There's no way they do this. There's no, there's no way they announce a brand new IP. They might, but I just don't think so. I think there's an opportunity here on the, on the, on the strength of what Legion was. This is their opportunity to keep riding that wave and be ready with the next big thing to tell us what it is. We won't play it till next year, maybe. Yeah. Like it always. It's usually about a year between announcement and play. The beta will be out like late next summer or something. Um, but I think they have to announce it. If they don't, I'll I'll eat my shorts. Yeah, and I mean, my, you got... My shorts are gross, dude. Yeah, you don't, don't eat your shorts. Well, but I mean, hey, you're confident, right? Go ahead. Put the shorts on the line. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You can wash them first. It's okay. <laughs> All right. I'll, that's true. I could do that. I still don't think it's good for me, but I'll do it. Uh, but I mean, fiber. they got Jaina right there on the key art. Big, yeah. prominent Jaina. They've got... Wait. World of Warcraft <laughs> put uh, put right after their their introduction panel. I well, think the all the signs. Say. It's the rudest thing you can say to Jaina. Big prominent Jaina, you can call her. <laughs> Big prominent um, Jaina. Yeah, and new skin she, coming to uh, heroes. Big prominent Jaina. Yeah, no kidding. But I but but you're right. Like that's a big. The fact that she's there is a big deal. I think. I think it's supposed to lead us to think things. It's to make us wonder. You know, we've been wanting to work on her for a while anyway. We don't know what her fate is. We just know she's pissed. And, you know, now that Christy Golden's full time, I mean, she can write her really well. Yeah. So hopefully we'll actually get a really good Jaina story. And it's not just I'm really mad, but I'm OK. But I'm mad again, but I'm OK. Yeah, yeah totally. I don't want to just keep clicking her and having her yell at me because she does that now. <laughs> it's really frustrating. Like well, you, you personally or whenever Scott! I go in the, the little area there with shit wizard Cadgar and he's got something to tell everybody. <laughs> And she's standing there. I make a point of clicking her 
because they'll all be there in a circle or whatever, right? All the prominent mages. And he'll be going, we've got to somehow push back the brr, brr, brr. And then she'll stand over there. And I'll, when he's all done and he's giving me the quest or whatever, I'll walk over to her and just click on her and she'll go, oh, freaking Theramore. What a piece of crap that was. <laughs> Freaks out. So, so whatever they're going to do with her, I say get freaking to it. I'm excited about that. Uh, to your point about Christy Golden, I forgot to even say this earlier, but we don't actually know what her, her title is because she hasn't said. True. Um, but I have to think that she's filling the master story void that perhaps Metzen held. You know what I mean? That would like, be really yeah. that, but that would be like, my guess. I'm her books it, it like fitting. her books are my favorite books. I mean they had a series of authors that they they tend to lean on and and far and away the ones she wrote were always my favorite. Um I think she has a grasp of the characters a lot better than most. Um, and I think the fact that they have a Women of Warcraft panel this year at BlizzCon mm -hmm. maybe says who they're putting a focus and an emphasis on going forward, which is good. It's long overdue. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I think that if they're going to do that and do that right, Christy Golden is the kind of person you put that onus on. Um, yeah. You know, as much as I love Chris Metzen, I don't think people are turning out to see Chris do a Women of Warcraft panel. I don't think he's your guy for that. I think he's yeah. your guy for a lot of things. Maybe not for that. So I think Christie's a, a really good choice, but you're right. We don't know. She could be writing the story to Heroes of the Storm. I don't know. But, and her name is, you know, her name is Christy. His name is Chris. I think there's some connection there. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. She has a really good goatee. No, that's not true. I didn't, uh, she's never. <laughs> but, but yeah, like uh, the woman. Of, what if, John, what if this happens? What if you get to BlizzCon and you're like, oh, I'm going to get front seats to this Women of Warcraft panel. I can't wait. I'm going to sit in front of there and I'm going to watch this whole thing and then it just turns out to be like a 20 minute expose on Chromie. What would you do? <laughs> hey, Chromie's okay. I've gotten She's okay so with Chromie. Turns out I liked her in Heroes of the Storm. And yeah. Scott, I will tell you another bit of wow content you may have missed. The mini deaths of Chromie thing is yeah. a fun mini game in and of itself. Mm -hmm. I don't <laughs> like the gating, and I think you might bounce off because of that, because eventually it does get to the point where it's like, Okay, you unlock the thing, come back tomorrow. But it is it is like getting a roguelike game inside of WoW. Really? Yeah. All right. It's pretty good. Okay. I'll have to check it out because you know I like my roguelikes. Yeah. Get some, I like get some my roguelike. Transmogs. Yeah. By the way, ask anybody who doesn't have context for what a roguelike is. Tell them that you like roguelike games. They have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. And even <laughs> people that do are like, that's not a roguelike. No, it's a, sub, <laughs> it's a yeah, it's a subgenre that the mainstream doesn't know what it means, and then anyone who does is jerky about it because you no, know, back in my day it was freaking die and that was it. You spend three hundred hours doing a thing and now you're dead and that's it. You start over, or you die trying and that was it. And it's like okay, all right, good for you. You shouldn't be on my team. That's what we call iteration. <laughs> like, what if that's how people were about MMOs? Oh, sorry, no no uh, XP loss on death. You can't call WoW an MMO. It's not an MMO. It, Only true oh MMOs have death uh, death loss XP. I don't know yeah, what that I'm means, that but changed. that's how I feel. I can't so do it. I'm glad that changed. I'm, I can't do that with people. That just gives me the gas. <laughs> oh, I don't know what that was. I apologize. <laughs> that, was the gas. that was the gas. It's there. <laughs> yeah, it's obviously. <laughs> it's there at the door. <laughs> Dumb computer thing. Anyway. Yeah, it's all right. Well, Scott, it has been an absolute pleasure talking to you. We really appreciate having you on. So thank you very much. Well, thanks, man. It's good to be here. That went really quick. We were uh, I know we've been here for a while, but it didn't seem like it. That was good. Yeah. Enjoyed it. It's insanely fast when we whenever we have you on. So, you know, thank you. It it's very enjoyable. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate it and uh, uh, always look forward to hanging out with you guys, talking to you guys. I look forward to seeing you at BlizzCon and yeah. I got some cool stickers to give everybody. So uh, if you're listening to this and you're going to be at BlizzCon, come up and find me because I got, I'll have a whole handful of things I can give you. <laughs> and, <laughs> they're, and they're stickers, just to be, yeah, just to be clear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're stickers. They're, <laughs> they're for the instance and core and, and exploding tire. So if you want some of that stuff, I, I'll have some things. Here's your core sticker, your exploding tire sticker, and some black tar heroin. Don't tell your parents. <laughs> 
I was just picturing you just put your hand in your pocket, pull out you have some lint, a button for some reason. Yeah. I guess black tar heroin. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know what you keep in your pocket, Scott. I like the idea that I would tell like a 38 year old gamer that here's some black heart par- heroin. Don't tell your parents. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. Okay, okay thank, I will. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> I look forward well, to my future life of addiction and recovery. <laughs> well, where can people find you in the meantime, Scott? Uh, they can find me. Uh, main thing is frogpants.com. You'll find all the shows and links and stuff to everything I'm doing there. Um, we are going to be doing a live episode of The Instance. Actually, we just found out that's what this is called. Up till now, I was told it might be a panel. We didn't know for sure, but... Uh, there at BlizzCon on camera for both the virtual ticket and people in the arena. I, I don't know which stage yet. Some of this stuff is is still happening or still being determined, but we're going to have a live version of that. So if you have the virtual ticket, you can watch that or you can catch it on DirecTV where this will also be shown or you can see it where you're there in uh, in uh, uh, you know on the at the event. And uh, we'll all be there. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Looking forward to seeing all of you people. If you want to follow me in the meantime and in real time, you can follow me on Twitter at Scott Johnson, which is currently my account, and nobody has hacked it. Yay. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you have it back. Mm-hmm. I'm good about that. Yeah. Uh, John, what about you? Where can people find you? Best place to find out what I'm up to, follow me at John underscore Jagger. If you want to hear me talk about Heroes of the Storm, the best place to do that is on Core. Core! which you can find at heroesforyou.com. It's a Heroes of the Storm podcast that I do with none other than Scott Johnson, who's here right now. Oh, uh, I didn't know that. And it's yeah. uh, it's a grand time. We have fun. We have uh, we have a good time. So that's the best place to find me. Ben, how about yourself? Yes. Uh, best place for me is on Twitter. I'm at Ben the Mage because I'm a monk. That's how I do things. <laughs> yep, checks out. <laughs> Yep. Um, I also do another show with Eludra called Battle Pets, where we talk about battle pets in the World of Warcraft. Um, one other really quick thing. I was on the latest episode of Rolling Restart with Ro, so check that out. We talk about uh, player housing in World of Warcraft, which I know, John, you absolutely love that idea. And uh, last but not least, Sarah and I last night did something brand new. Um, well, we... Can you talk about it on the show? Or <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to. I'm just about to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Do we have to send the kids to bed or anything? No, no we're okay. We're okay. okay we good. tried something um, new. Yeah, no, we're good. We're good. Okay. Um, but uh, she has never played Super Mario World before, and I picked up an SNES Classic, so we streamed us uh, playing that. We're going to do a uh, ongoing thing where uh, she plays games she's never played or Whatever, we're just gonna do stuff together online, in video game form, <laughs> <laughs> and enjoy it while Twitch keeps it up. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you know, we're gonna try not to get kicked off of Twitch. So. Some policies against some of that stuff. But yeah, that'd, that'd be that'd be great. Actually, I love this idea because, well, hey, I can't. Well, what? She never played it. How she never no. played Super Mario World? No, she only had uh, like an original Nintendo growing up, and then uh, I think what. Yeah, Game Boy, original Nintendo, and then uh, she skipped to like uh, PlayStation. Wow. So yeah, she... even that was like way after they were out. Like there was like huge crowds of gaming. Yeah, so she, she doesn't do? have. What did she do in those intervening years? What happened? Was this um, a dark time, a blackout? Like, what happened there? Cause uh, she just, she just kind of sat around. Fell a lot, into I guess. some I ice know. and was frozen like Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But uh, no, it, it's actually really interesting because she doesn't have the gaming language that I have since, you know, I've been playing like every system since it's been coming out. So like current games and stuff, uh, something will just automatically click like, oh, that's a door. I need to go in it where, you know, she doesn't have that because she doesn't have the same experience. So it's really interesting to just kind of, you know, go through some of these things with her. So I'm I'm really looking forward to it. That's super cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the butthole cave. Um, it'll be up on YouTube. You'll see what we're talking about. All right. Look forward to the butthole cave and other yeah. things Ben and Sarah tried uh, coming to a YouTube channel near you. Yeah, um, and uh, last but not least, uh, we're going to have a bumper on uh, after the, the all the, hey, this is what's going on with the show. But um, the finalists have been chosen for the uh, art or the Azeroth Roundtable Championship. Um, that is Jocelyn Jules, Marconin, Mick Montgomery, Pat Crane, and Thist. So go to bit.ly slash Murloc 2017 uh, with a capital M to vote for who you want to be uh, competing for Azeroth Roundtable Champion this year. Nice. 
Okay, I think that's everything. So other than that, uh, the show can be found on Azroth Roundtable or at Azroth RT on Twitter, AzrothRoundtable.com. Um, yeah, all the other stuff that I always say every week. There's a lot there. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so be sure to check out all those very important links. But what is definitely important, and we'll take just a moment to say, is thank you to all the Patreon patrons who make this possible. If you want to help support our show, head on over to Patreon.com slash Azroth rt no i'm forgetting because ben forgot it's it's <laughs> flowing together uh as always i want to thank our murloc club members aaron and simon thank you for your exceptional patronage uh i said that perfect and uh yeah go ahead and join us patreon.com slash azeroth rt thank you again for your support so uh scott thanks again john it's good to have you back and uh chat room you've been awesome <laughs> great i'm back <laughs> yeah, I know. It's awesome. There you go. I, I, I'm happy I, to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. That's, and that's the show. That's the show. Yeah.